Oh, hey. Oh, hey, Alice. Fancy seeing you here. You, you walked in on us at a advantageous time. We've got Scufflemus and Phil are here and uh, Neef is uh, wandering around somewhere. I'm sure he'll be back at some point. And last but not least, we have Anthony uh, from Beyond here. And um, really excited to talk to you, man. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited. It's cool. It's good stuff. Awesome. Um, so I'm not really one to waste time. So let's just get into it. What you, if you want to, I, I saw an interview on, or not an interview, but I saw a video on Beyond Here's YouTube channel where you were kind of just talking about like how you guys came to be. Um, and I guess if, if you want to like start me from the beginning, you, you came here from San Antonio, right? Yep. Yeah. I moved here from San Antonio um, in 2016. Um, right in January 2016. Um, not really. I wanted to move here for music, um, but I really didn't um, do a whole lot with music for the first couple years. I just working odd jobs and kind of wasn't really focused in, until um, 2019. So I just kind of explored the city, I guess you could say, for the first couple years. Um, and then when I really got serious about like starting a band, um, just hop on Facebook and started looking around for you know guitar player um, bass player drummer that kind of thing so more of a recent development though so well your shit is tight man you all are really talented like i, I was i've been going through what you guys have um out and I, just really impressed you have a really good voice um and i'll, I'll it has like um it you you guys make stuff that could 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 be like really really popular like radio style hits i could see that kind of stuff getting played like um in major circulation and what i you have like a certain rasp to your voice that kind of gives it a little more grit and i like that um cool. yeah, thank you. i was curious um do do you do all the songwriting or is it kind of a or as far as lyrics go or is it kind of a, like a collaborative effort or uh, no, I, I write everything, um, lyrics, and probably uh, 80, 90 percent of the the music. Okay. Uh, I, I take a song um, to rehearsal and show the guys, and if it's if we're getting some traction, if it's you know enough to to work and keep keep working on, um, then it kind of makes it into the set list somewhere. Um, so there's a little bit of tweaking and um, like John, the guitar player, he'll add in uh, like the guitar solos and all that fancy stuff I can't do. So um, he'll, it's probably 20% um, group effort and 80%, hey, here's something, is this good enough to, to play? So I got you. I saw um, the video for going there. It's mm -hmm. like, it's like really good, like a lot of like good quality. Um, and uh, did I see that you um, signed with a label recently? No, it, it looked like it though. Um, just on the video thing before I forget, uh, Josh Lockhart, uh, J Lockhart Media is his uh, handle. Um, he was the, the videographer for that. He's okay. a super nice guy. Uh, he's like a one man, you know, army. He just does everything himself and just great, great hand, great quality stuff. So I just wanted to give him a quick plug, but um. Uh, no, so those were some uh, sync licensing um, contracts. We're working with a company called Tinderbox, and they help um, to set up that kind of stuff for bands and artists. So we, we got some stuff with um, like Discovery Channel, NASCAR, a few other ones. So it's just oh. like, hey, um, we like your music. Will you agree to let us hold your music and may? Maybe we will use it, maybe we won't, but they have it now. It's one of those things. So but yeah, that, that was exciting though. So something I've always wanted to to kind of look into a little bit. Um, so hopefully that'll go somewhere in a few years. So yeah, that's what's up, man. Yeah. Um so uh <laughs> what do you think is beyond here? Beyond uh this? Yeah, that, that's a great question, man. It's something that I think about a lot. Um that's actually like why the name is what it is um i'm always like i'm well never, that was my next question <laughs> yeah that, that's exactly 
it's it's very on the nose. So um, yeah, I'm never like I'm like I live here, right? Obviously, because I live in this place that we all live. But mentally, I'm always thinking about other things and um, why am I here? Why are you here? How did we all get here? What you know? What are we doing? That kind of thing. So um, the songs have a um, I don't know. I like to put a sense of wonder if that's not too artistic or whatever, just because I'm, I'm always asking, searching, looking for something, you know, that kind of thing. So I try to kind of convey that in the essence of the music. So Yeah, it when, comes across well. So when you first came in the town, so I, what, uh, when, did, when did you come into town? Was it a few years ago or? Yeah, it was 20, 2016. 2016, um, okay, that's what I was thinking mm -hmm. it was around then. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you came into town, obviously you had been playing already. Cause I mean, I can tell you, you didn't just start singing in 2016. No. Yeah. So I, um, I got a guitar. My friends got me a guitar for, um, Christmas and I was in college. I would have been 2012, would have been 2012, I think. So I started playing guitar. And right loosely very loosely playing guitar 2012 yeah. um just like rhythm stuff whatever and then um but yeah i've been singing for a little bit longer than that but nothing serious this always is my first a, like band well have you been on you always been in a like songwriting when you were a singer or did you were yeah. so mm -hmm. guitar, yeah, that that tends to happen especially in the situation and in, in the the come up of music where you know you it's like you're saying you loosely were playing guitar because you needed to learn how to write a song on something other than just your voice. So it wasn't like, you know, your passion was learning to be a great guitar player. You need, right. you needed that instrument convey. That's a real, that's a real common thing that happens here and especially here in music city, you mm -hmm. know, I've dealt, I've worked with many, many musicians for years and I used to talk about, you know, we were the town you got off the bus with $30 in your guitar and you might end up at the Ryman. You know, that was the other thing I was wondering by hearing y'all's music and your style. Um, it is, it, as uh, Alex was saying, it, it does, it's what we call accessible. It's got a very accessible sound, but I like it that it's not, it does, it's, it's not tired to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got a, y'all got, y'all got y'all's own thing in there but y'all still have a very pro sound to you that makes mm -hmm. it a very accessible, like you're saying, being able to sell it through to commercial music and what have you, you know. Um, was your initial sound as you were coming up writing, was it, did, is that the sound you heard or is that kind of what happened with the band when you got everybody together or mm -hmm. did you have something, or did you get off the bus wanting to be a country singer? <laughs> you know, sure it is. Hey, so, um, you know, <laughs> no, it's that's a great question, man. Um, so I listen to like literally, like literally everything. Like I love classical music. I love like um, jazz. I love like hip hop. I love metal. Like um, I just love everything. Um, I appreciate country music if it sounds good and if they're saying something worth right. hearing. <laughs> I appreciate right. all music, you know. So um, I don't. Know, I, I hear a lot of things. Um, just when I'm like writing a song or whatever, or just getting different ideas out. Um, I think for this particular project, I, I did want like an alt rock okay. sound. So I was trying to kind of hone that in and kind of weed out all the different mm, things yeah. I asked from yeah. upstairs, you know, so, yeah. Well, it is a labor. I mean, you know, you learn very quickly that, especially when you put a band together, that it is a labor. It is a, mm -hmm. a work. It is something that you are putting together, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to when you're sitting by yourself with your guitar banging out a feeling about something, you know, it right. may go somewhere. It may not, it might be flipped all over by the time it hits the band, but you know, that's the work. Mm -hmm. Totally. I think especially like in a town like Nashville where like you throw a rock and hit somebody who, like you said, could play at the Ryman. Right. Like everyone is so good. It's like stupid, you know, so it kind of forces you to, yeah get your shit together and like oh i should probably practice once in a while you know yeah, yeah yeah it's um you really have to have a plan when mm -hmm. you're here now nowadays especially it's not it's not the music city it once was you know music row isn't what it once was unfortunately but 
you know, we're all we're all managing a role with the changes. I yeah. mean, you know. I um I saw you you guys just recently got through of a string of shows. Um I hate that I missed it. I saw you guys play the night before last. Um do you guys have any uh shows coming up? Like any dates? Um yeah, we've got a couple things uh next Saturday, um the 17th, I wanna say. Um we got Fat Cat Swims. Um okay. and, okay. and I think it's like an hour get down there. Um we're playing with the year of October, but he's Josh. And oh, sure. fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, it should be super fun, man. So You yeah. said uh, like this upcoming Saturday, 17th? Mm -hmm. Yep, this, okay. this week. This Hell yeah. Saturday. That's right. what's up. I think it's the 17th. And where was it? It was um... uh, Fat Cat Slims. It's, oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I don't know, yeah, just, but it's like downtown. So. Ish. I think I know where that's at. Kind of to the left of downtown. <laughs> Cool, man. I'm going to so, do my best to see you there. So, Anthony, I have a question for you. Yeah, what's that? Okay. So, you say that you like all kinds of music. Yes? Yeah. Do you like piccolo music? <laughs> piccolo. <laughs> um, I like the instrument. <laughs> oh. I was waiting for something to follow that. <laughs> uh, uh. No, I, I actually had another question, though. Um, yeah. So, to an aspiring musician, what would you say to them when it comes to developing your own sound? How, how do, did you come about developing the sound that you play in Beyond Here? Man, um... I don't know if it's one of those things you can really teach somebody. You just have to, they just have to understand that you have to love what you're playing. And the response or the reception, that's kind of like the side effect, like whatever people, however they respond, that's how they're going to respond either way. So you might as well be doing something that you, like as a person, you know, kind of kind of start from there. Um, that's the best way I can put it, man. It's not really, again, like we're in Nashville, we're in a city where a lot of people try to, chase after or sound like whatever is current but whatever is current you know changes every every couple of weeks or probably you know faster than that you know so actually i, I know a band i'm not going to name them but, but we we're talking about that and they were saying yeah dude i'm just trying to keep up with whatever and i was like okay but you could also just play the music that you love and then like okay. wherever that goes there used to be to a, 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 a rule of thumb you know in the industry of of trying to when you put things together you're not trying to maintain you're trying to be the next thing you know mm -hmm. and that's really what people are trying to do but when you know people think they're going to get a lot of people make the mistake of thinking they're going to get there by doing the status quo when you've got to push the threshold mm -hmm. you've got to try that new stuff mm -hmm. you know i mean there's so many great bands that didn't get good for 20 years and that's know? that's kind of like didn't get popular for 20 years they were great right. when they came out you know 20 years later we love their album you know mm -hmm. and that's that's kind of like what you were saying about it a minute ago too where like beyond here has an accessible sound right. but it's it's organically it, that way yeah. it's not like you guys were trying to force it into a category it's like it ended up that way right right and it, it shows like that shows in your sound that's good. I'm really glad that that shows. Yeah, we, we try to be super intentional about um, about that. Like, look, man, like, again, just when I started the band, I wasn't really worried about um, the, the people, per se, because, again, like, everyone was just going to be super good just because we're all here. So the tell, tell us a little bit about when how, how the band came together. I mean, who, who did you, did you know any of them at all prior or any of your, your band members? No, I no, I literally just put a thing on Facebook. Um, it, it was so weird. I didn't even I think I'd maybe done maybe five or six little like riders round type deals before. Right. So I I really had a blank slate. I didn't know any musicians at all. Okay. Uh, just like a couple one off people that I had run into, but um so I really didn't know anybody to even ask for like personal recommendations or anything like that. So right. all I had was like, hey, Facebook, there's like a few musician pages and stuff like that. So um, let's put up a post on, I think, yeah, been natural musicians, um, or, well, there's a few of them, I don't know, but, um, yeah, so Logan Hatcher and, uh, the bass player, 
and then Jonathan Tuckness, the drummer, um, they responded to the first little post I threw up there. And so we met for a couple of rehearsals. Um, and this time was all about like the vibe and the hang. Like if you don't get along, at least for the, for for like an original band, if you're doing like the Broadway thing, it doesn't matter that much because you're just kind of playing yeah, for right. that four <laughs> hours and then you know. work for hire. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But if you're gonna be seeing each other for a long time, <laughs> you probably right. want to get along. So yeah, we had a few rehearsals and just got together. You know, the energy was pretty good. Um, I did go through a couple different guitar players, just trying to find the right fit uh, sonically. And uh, yeah, finding finding a good lead player. You can find great lead players, but finding a lead player that you want in your sound is a whole thing. You know, mm -hmm. I've often yeah. I've turned down sessions where it's not that I didn't feel my lead work was good enough. I just knew the lead mm -hmm. I was going to play wasn't going to do it. You know, and see, most people wouldn't. Right, they would just. Yeah. insert themselves into any situation right. possible they're more worried about putting their name on it i'm more worried about yeah. the song being great you know yeah right so but that's so um and so y'all finally found a so you, you basically got your rhythm section together and then you hunted down a good lead player mm -hmm. yep yeah and we actually just added a keys player um this guy matt he's okay which is so good nice. <laughs> um yeah so it's just it's been really cool to kind of develop the sound even that much more um there really weren't any keys on my first EP, New Dangers. There was some lights and stuff in the background, but you really can't. Right. It's not prominent, you know. So, right. Um, he's working on some stuff for the next batch of songs. So. Okay. That'll be good. That'll be good because that's a uh, keys are not a. You know, that's one of those things that you don't see put in rock, and you know, it's heavy, heavy metal. You know, they'll do some stuff like that, and certain mm -hmm. synth bands, but it's one of those things that. We're especially now we're in an era where people need to be a little more bold with it. You know, there's a time when it wasn't, it just didn't fit, but stuff is so pushed now that, you know, it'll be real interesting to hear, you know, which are, what you guys do with that. For sure. Season. Yeah. Man, they used to have all kinds of instrumentation back in the 80s and 90s. And a lot of that just kind of fell off. I think, again, just trying to be mainstream or popular or whatever, like you lose all that, all the good yeah. stuff, you know. I'm glad you said that. I was just thinking that, like, I was thinking about um, what uh, that Santana song that starts with the keys. Is it Black Magic Woman? Um, a lot of Santana. Oh, starts with keys. Well, but yeah, but yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of those uh, old great bands yeah. that like set a precedent. Yeah, all, people Probably. tried to follow that precedent. Greg, Greg, Greg Rowley from Santana went on to start uh, was it uh, Journey? I believe. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. No, that was nice. You got great key players, but I mean. Rick Wakeman, you know, he's all over. Um, that was David Bowie's studio player on Ziggy Stardust, but he went on to form Yes, you know, so. Oh, shit. You know, I was just talking about the other day that people think, you know, no longer, I think now no longer is the world too cool for the guitar. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. going to build one because, you know, I think the world's ready for it. <laughs> Dude, I'm all about it, man. So it, it goes back to the thing early. Like, if, if you don't love what you're playing, what's the point? Like, just do yeah. you and, and that entirety. And if people like it, it's cool. If not, it's, it's cool, too. You're doing it for yourself, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to hear that you uh, have that attitude about it and y'all have the, a very pro sound. Um, who, Where are you guys getting recording done? Is it various or y'all got a specific person? Or you got a producer y'all mm -hmm. working with? Yeah, for the first couple... Um, we're finishing mixing down the second EP now. That's why I keep saying the first couple because in my mind I'm already on like the, the fourth or fifth one. Right. But, uh, nice. It's uh yeah, this guy Colt Caparoon, uh Dark River Studios. Uh, He's up in um Ashton City, like twenty okay. minutes north. Right, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, that's got some great stuff though. Yes, it's uh, sonically it sounds really good. Very really, really pro, really pro sounds on this. It's on um You've, you've been here long enough now that like I'm sure you got a feel for how Nashville is um but like it, it's not enough to just be talented and it's not enough to just be creative here because you have a lot of creative artists and you have a lot of talented musicians um so you you um you're really the whole package you, you're per, like a performer and you can put on a show like um I can I can tell that just from the videos and 
um, like what you're doing is unique enough and your whole band is really good. Like all Solid execution really is really good concept and execution. And it's gotta be that, like you were saying, man, it's cutthroat. You gotta, yeah. and you guys are, and that's really cool. Um, I want to bring it back to uh, what I was saying earlier. You know, I think everyone has an opinion about what happens after we die. Everyone's thought about it, but no one on this planet knows that answer. What's beyond here? Yeah. So, <laughs> so what, what are your thoughts about what's beyond here? I just love how this fits so perfectly. Right? Um, <laughs> Dad jokes are us over here. No, um, no so it's weird. I, so I grew up in a very, like, religious, like, overly... Like we get it kind of kind of family. So um I'm Same. 28. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um interestingly enough, I run into a lot of musicians that have a similar tale in one way or another. But um yeah, so I mean I, for the first geez, you know, 20 plus years, well, I guess 18, 19 years until like after high school, I was just like kind of told and taught and shown what to believe and what to think which is like now looking back with a little bit of like distance, I'm like, hmm, should probably be able to think for myself at some point. So just like the thing we're talking about with having kids, that's a huge part of that looming, you know, anxiety. Like you have a very completely vulnerable, completely impressionable creature that you can fill up with whatever you want to fill up in their minds and, and shape their identities and shape their ideologies and mindsets and that determines how they go throughout their lives that's a huge like responsibility you know so yeah. I, I definitely don't take that lightly but anyway um no so I had that just kind of being drilled into my mind for the first you know, 18 19 whatever years um so when I was in college I was still I didn't like I didn't go crazy and just party and, and all that stuff in college kind of wish I did now because it's what's the point either way it's kind of a Anyways, college is not my favorite. <laughs> it's kind of a business that I feel, again, this is forced on you and you really don't need it. But yep. Unless you're like Preach. a doctor or something, please don't like YouTube shit if you're going to cut me up. Like go to school for that. But most things I feel like you, it's completely optional. But so in college, I didn't really party. I just kind of studied a lot. And um, so I didn't really work to change or challenge my belief systems at all for that three, it was, it was three years when I was in college. Um, so that got me to about 22 or 23, which is when I moved to Nashville. I was 22. Um, so when I moved here, same thing. I, di I didn't really, the first couple of years, I didn't really do anything to challenge what I'd come up um, believing and hearing. Um, so really only like the past two years, I would say, like 2019, 18, 19 in there somewhere, I really started to like, I stuck away from the whole church world and stuff like that i used to play for churches like worship leading like i was i was in <laughs> i was in there pretty heavily so um i just pretty much cut all that stuff off and then um just ask myself like what do you actually believe like you've been told this this whole rhetoric and this whole thing um but you never really thought to ask yourself if you actually believe that for yourself you know which is it's super elementary and super basic like when you say it out loud but you really have to be intentional about doing that for yourself otherwise they'll just kind of keep going down whatever path you know for better or for worse you know do so you, all that to say <laughs> do you ever win like do you, was there a poignant moment or something or something somebody said or something you saw that made you Man. just go you know what i don't i want to i want to step back and rethink what i've been told or was it a culminating thing you know a lot of people it's sometimes it's you know this and that and this and that and you find like wait a minute mm -hmm. No, it was definitely the, the culmination. It was definitely like, kind of like the, uh, there's a song, um, Architects, they're like a metal band. They have a line in one of the songs, so something like even the mountains erode with the rain. So just that long-term effect of like, right. just kind of getting worn down with the same shit over and over and over. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> if what I'm reading is not lining up with what I'm seeing, something, either I'm off or that whole thing, you know what I mean? Some, something's not adding up, you know? So more of a combination kind of thing. You, you were getting rained down on with a lot more truth than you were able to, than that foundation was able mm -hmm. to uphold anymore. So, yeah, that's a great way to say it. Yeah. So in your yeah. journeys where you, in your journey where you've 
you're kind of like figuring out what makes sense to you what what conclusions have you come to so far uh, i think the main one is, is what you said earlier like no one physically knows like right that's the only I'll, good answer to that question yeah i think so i mean I'll, which again is if you really understand that that should take all of the I remember like even when I was like super into all of that stuff, just me as a person, I was never one to like judge anybody or put anybody down or look at anybody like like they were missing something or like, oh, you're on the wrong side of this thing. Like, like no, because I don't know. This is what I believe. But, but it's because I believe it's raining outside doesn't mean it's raining outside. I think there's a difference between like belief and actual truth and fact. And I don't think we know where that line is exactly, but it's 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 somewhere there's there's that divide somewhere that we're trying to find you know so mm -hmm. well said yeah um yeah no um it's, it, it goes back to that simple uh the fact that you can recognize that is beyond halfway being there you know <laughs> the fact You're, that you can just look you know it's like like it's like an injury or an illness if you don't know you're injured it's going to take that much longer to heal you know if mm -hmm. once you've accepted okay now you know then you all of a sudden realize where you're at and what point you can move from you know mm -hmm. totally yeah. i think what you're saying um is a <clears throat> is a familiar story for most of us here um like uh, philip and i were raised as jehovah's witnesses and like with all the most of the things you hear about them are true um <laughs> and like so I, I definitely know what it's like having religion forced on you as a, at a young age um and trying to become becoming an adult and finding your own sense of the world um mm -hmm. I, I think scuffle Muss has been to a church before also yeah <laughs> um oh you're muted scuff I muted myself so you wouldn't hear my ruckus piccolo play. Um, I, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I had my moment. Uh, I think it was like 2012. Uh, I was eating a deviled egg on Easter Sunday, which I thought there's got to be more. <laughs> and there was, there was hub. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> there's always ham somewhere in the room, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, if, if there's not ham at Easter Sunday, uh, caretaker says you're doing it wrong. I don't know. I'm a forest troll. I don't have right. human customs. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, you know, yeah, I think you've been doing all right by just maintaining with what caretaker says, you know. Usually you know, um, I mean, if if I don't, she um, she hits me with a spoon. <laughs> oh no! With a spoon? Hey, yo, know, she's got a wooden one. And it's not very fun. So I've got to make sure that I do my chores. Hey, you know, I don't. I don't blame you. I, I don't know if she's listening. Uh, Caretaker, could you hear me? I don't think that she called. I think you're good. I think you're good. Okay. We're good. <laughs> okay. Hi, Anthony. Um, have you ever had trouble with someone and you turned it into a song? Um, yeah, I don't really do the whole like Taylor Swift, Stevie Nicks thing of, like <laughs> of aggressively. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just and, until I work through enough shit. <laughs> I feel like halfway at peace most of my songs are going to be just working through stuff in a way that sounds like a catchy pop song in a nutshell word so not yet but at some point i probably will <laughs> hey. i mean it, it's i don't necessarily uh like like you said it's not like there's anything wrong with like taylor swift doing that but it's also kind of irresponsible like it's probably better not to if you can find something else to write about <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you're writing about truth and that is the only thing you have to write about, 
then it's kind of mm -hmm. like, I mean, you know, how deep does that go? You know, mm -hmm. when artists are leaving, you can kind of wonder, and it could be about this, could be about that, but it doesn't really matter. You know, when I like people hear, when, when people hear my songs, I like to ask them, if they ask me what something is about, I like to ask them to tell me what they think it was about first. Mm -hmm. So I can get their view because I've picked up, you know, I call it speaking in tongues. You know, I've picked up meaning out of my songs that I didn't even have when I've been there by somebody else telling me. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even think about that that way. And then I apply it to what I said or what I was thinking, and it just expands it, you know. Mm. And I think that's the beauty of that kind of art, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, as a as a creative entity, Alex, I think you could say there's irresponsibility, but as a um, published entity of gaining capital for a uh, record label <laughs> that's exactly what you're supposed to do yeah yeah, yeah. you know depends well, on what you're going after i guess right yeah i agree it, it is quite irresponsible to uh, make songs about other people it's 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 kind of terrible to put that kind of karma out into the world. Yeah. I know it makes a good catchy tune, but sometimes it's just easier to work your problems out. Well, mm. when we see stuff like that, you 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 can feel. I mean, if it's if it's done well, you can feel a bite to it, and like you feel the just the um, like the stench emanating off of it, right? And that's yeah, that yeah. smells like a stinky dog turd. So I guess what I'm saying is intuitively, we all know that it's wrong, um, but we just don't really take it as far, I guess, as what, what we're talking about right now. <laughs> Yo, actually like but, working see, on those. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's why I, I, I'm not a very good songwriter because I just, I have an issue with like putting my emotions into something mm -hmm. that I'm not going to feel that way about later. So for me, it's a little more difficult. I like to write about happy things that, that would make well, I, other I, people feel happy at the time that I'm happy. I've heard some of your heavier stuff in, 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 uh, in Wooten when, uh, when you had your metal band, Scuffle Moss. Uh, I, thought that was, yeah, I thought that was really good. Scuffle I thought you were a good not, songwriter. Yeah, I don't know, Scuffle Moss. I've seen you go dark. <laughs> Yo, okay, okay, okay. So <laughs> there's going dark. But like the intention behind the song, like when you write a song, and its intention behind it was to cause harm to someone. Okay. Like, kind yeah. of like when you you make a spell and you throw it at someone. Because yep. that's right. exactly what you're doing. Exactly. You're making a spell with words and you're forming it up and you're releasing it in the form of music. Yep. Yeah. So it's even strong. Like, you know, uh, the only songs that I have recorded and released into the world or about hot chicken and um, my root. Right. So, and, well, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, but yeah. Anthony, you write good songs. Um, what would you say to someone who has difficulty writing songs? Like myself. What would um, you say to me? I guess I would say that, I mean, there's... I, it kind of focuses back to what your end game is, I guess. Um, what I love about just the creative arts in, in general, whether it's like music or poetry or film or painting, any kind of creative expression, dancing, I love all of that. I think the point of all of that is to get out whatever message or, um, like you said, the emotional thing you're trying to pull out however that comes across i think if you do that i think that is successful that's art that's creation you don't have to it doesn't have to look like a certain thing or sound like a certain thing for it to be good mm -hmm. you know what i mean one of my favorite artists um ever is eminem the rapper eminem um not because i think he's a really talented like writer and a rapper obviously but um the thing i think that a lot of people don't like about him is that he kind of talks about the same thing over and over and over and that's exactly why I love him because he's, as an artist, if that's what he's still working through, he's still working through that. And he's still trying to find a way to express that and to get that out. So I think whatever you're trying to pull out and work through, I mean, I think that's, there's beauty in that right there. You know what I mean? Yeah. M, M is one of the best hip hop artists of all time. 
and mm. I'm not I'm not even a huge fan of his, but recognize, you know, right. like yeah. it's just, it goes hard, and he's gone yeah. hard for like over a decade, which mm-hmm. is crazy. Which in modern hey, recognize like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, like kind of beating a dead horse. Yeah. But I mean, hey, it's honest, like you're saying, if that's what he's going through, then it's good thing he didn't just do what was popular and become that thing, because that's what we love about him is even though he's at that higher echelon of uh, artists like that mega fame, he's mm-hmm. got still some like real content to him opposed to some of these other major acts we see. Not to like, I, I, it's just not my thing, but like, you know, like something like, uh, like Bieber or nothing wrong against that. It's just, there's no real oomph to it, you know, content. I think it goes back to the best piece of songwriting advice I was ever given by uh, Lori Webb, who pretty much taught me how to go from being a musician or a composer and a poet and to like throw all that away and just be a songwriter was that it doesn't really matter what you talk about and how you talk about it or even what you're playing as long as everything that you do in it is truth Hmm. as long as you feel everything because that's what people hear in songs that's why stuff that what we call contrived yeah it might be great on the radio and people might be able to dance to it and it might hit but it doesn't sit with people you know you can't you can't go through the 90s and even the early 2000s and tell me the major long hitting artists they're not even known now but you know i still listen to led zeppelin almost weekly you know Mm -hmm. and you know so you have there's a lot of aspects in there there's a lot of things with production and you know the, the rise in music itself but there's still the idea of things with truth and then there's things that are contrived and the human spirit recognizes that even if somebody's mentally not there and they're just like, I'm going to go dance, you know, and I don't care. I just like the beat. That's the level of it. The people that care more than just the dance beat don't get into it. It doesn't stick with them, you know, and, you know, yeah. it's like, it's almost, uh, uh, good. I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's, it's like a nutritional level with music. A lot of stuff it's yeah. you know it's empty calorie yeah. you know yeah that's what i was gonna yeah it's almost insulting to me as a human that like the industry assumes or thinks that that's what i like that mm. tasteless like little what are those little um fucking little rice cake looking things with like no taste oh, no flavor yeah those are, those rice cakes yeah. yeah yeah they're like there's there's nothing there but yep. that's what they constantly just pump out at us you know i'm like we don't want this. Why are you still making this? You know, but Let's put it in a different. I think way. it says a lot about the, our generation and the fact that those things are popular. I think the majority of the people don't have the sense to want anything better than that. They, their minds are already so overwhelmed that all they can take is the garbage. They they don't know any. They don't know any better. <laughs> Yo, Phil, yeah. you hit it right on the head there. Yeah. Oh, it, it's what society in general feeds to the, the masses. Uh, whatever is given out in mass will come back as what other people want. So to find what society wants, you either conform to it or you tell society what they want. Isn't that right, Neef? Yeah, that kind of sounds like a... a... A little thing somebody wrote <laughs> on a bonus track. Yeah, so the world needs to be told what it likes. So go on and tell it to like you. Yep. You know, the world <laughs> needs to be sold. So go on and sell it. Something's mm-hmm. gonna make a profit for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean it's it's ours. Well, I'm I'm not mad at the ones that recognize that formula and that right. capitalize on it. I'm not mad at them. You know, it's just right. like you know we're feeding them, yeah. so you really can't can't blame them for taking advantage of it so i mean it's clearly filling a need or a filling a desire also like there's a market for it so what's mm-hmm. wrong with someone making a product for people that people enjoy yeah if people want to eat garbage let them eat garbage 
I saw <laughs> I saw a quote the other day, and I can't I don't remember who it was, but it was just a little thing. It was like, oh no no, it was it was like a wise man once said, a bee does not spend its time explaining to a fly why honey is better than shit. Yep. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> like if you don't if you don't like it i don't need to to, if if you don't like a piece of art i don't need to force you to like that or like where art is subjective and like people are gonna like that kind of stuff and people are gonna like other kinds of stuff and no Mm -hmm. one really i don't know we we can all especially here in nashville we all tend to be a little snobby when it comes to art but at the end of the day (laughs) none of us are um i mean I think informed opinions are a little more like like if I hear a musician critiquing music, that means a little bit more to me than like a layman. Or if I hear like um, like a published author critiquing a book, that means a little more to me than like regular critique. But mm-hmm. I mean, you can only take that so far. It is subjective yeah. when it comes to art. <laughs> so when do you think the world is going to accept piccolo music? <laughs> <laughs> right now with this video. I mean, they better. <laughs> I, don't, I don't i don't you know you let me know where the resistance is scuffle moss you know <laughs> i'll form a musicians coalition that that'd be my next project i'll put it right in there with keep music and music city well keep bring back piccolo music <laughs> we will take to the streets with piccolos at our teats nice yeah i'm down i'm down i i'm just imagining like a whole army led by scuffle Moss as he's like marching with the piccolo and there's all i'm 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 in awe with that vision in my mind right now <laughs> Looking at are, are there pitchforks in fire or is this a peaceful piccolo thing <laughs> i mean i'm I, what i'm seeing is that it's intended to be peaceful but the world just i don't know if the world will be able to handle that but the problem is, is that piccolo players ain't no joke. <laughs> they so go if the hard. masses try to come, they don't realize how hard these piccolo players are fitting to be coming back at. So, you know, <laughs> it, might, it might be disastrous, but hey, it might be needed. It also might summon the massive winds that will knock over the Batman Tower. Oh, shit. The, oh, you mean the Dio building? <laughs> no, the Batman building. Oh. The Dio building. <laughs> no. Anyone? It's, anyone it's, for, it's, go ahead. It's a Batman building. Anyone not from Nashville is going to be really confused. <laughs> like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> We're talking about the AT&T building in downtown Nashville. It's We're very tall. It looks like Bell Bruce South Wayne's Tower. house. It was the former Bell South Tower before it became. Yeah, but now it's AT&T. Oh, that, you mean the Batman building? That is in the shape of devil horn. <laughs> we call it the Dio building. I call it the Batman building. Nobody calls it that. It like I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to start with Scuffle Sorry, I've never heard it called that. Yet yeah, Nashvillians call it the Batman building. <laughs> Yo. From Music City, call it <laughs> the Dio building. <laughs> Says you. I rest my case. <laughs> so um, we we brought up Eminem a little earlier, and I just kind of wanted to go back because we also brought up something else about uh, Scuffle Must had asked about making music about other people, you know. Um, and I we had agreed that it wasn't good, but I just want to put in one example where it was good and it was needed. Um, it was when Eminem so gracefully convinced uh, another artist to uh, stop doing hip hop and go do <laughs> rock instead. I think that was I think that was that was the one OK where, you know, where a diss track or a song about another person was was spot on. Alice, if you don't know, Eminem made a diss track on MGK, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, like, well, like it's old at this point, like three years ago. And um, he kind of, after that diss track, he kind of just stopped rapping and started doing pop music. (laughs) You got to look at like 
the level of like it's kind of like when somebody like if somebody sneezed in any public space in 2020 like all the eyes in that room like locked onto them it's like that but nobody like, said I'm, bless you no, <laughs> no all of a sudden nobody was saying gazin type bless you none of that <laughs> it's just like snake eyes you know so it's like that kind of like room shifting attention yeah millions of people <laughs> looking at him <laughs> like oh what are you gonna do that's a lot of pressure i don't care who you are it's a lot of pressure like and you, you know yeah. well you also got to think about a marketing thing i mean mm-hmm. there's no way you could come back i mean his his label would have told him look dude there's no way a rap album from you is going to work going to go out anymore because mm-hmm. this guy countered or maybe he wanted to and that was a perfect way to do it well let him and him do a diss track on you I mean, that's what people don't understand. Yeah. Half the diss tracks are, you know, it's like it's, it's like all in house. It's yeah. like a roast. Mm-hmm. You know, right. people go into a roast. You don't. I mean, you might not like the dude, but that's all got nothing to do with the roast. Mm-hmm. More than likely, yeah. you're cordial or your friends or something. It's but you know, it's all scripted. It's all for a thing. It's all mm-hmm. yeah. All for the that's money. that's American that's politics amazing. also. Yeah. And even, even more the biggest, so. <laughs> most predominant artist, you know, as good and talented as they are, when you see them hit a certain level, they are susceptible to that, no matter what you want to, you know, what you're, what anybody really wants to think about them. Their freedom mm-hmm. of artistic integrity on a label is given to them by the label. Even right. as, if they got the artistic freedom, it's still given to them by that label. So it's, you know, it's kind of a, you know, it's it's not like Rush or, you know, when their label was like, we're giving y'all artistic freedom because we don't understand why y'all keep putting out hit records. Even though they're not hit records and people are just buying them up, so whatever. You know, that doesn't really happen anymore. Back to what you are saying, Phil, like, like we might have established that it's irresponsible thing to do. But I mean, that being said, like, that that's a big part of my art like i've whenever i am feeling a certain way about like a situation or something like writing that down is like an exorcism for me it's very therapeutic to get that out of me i think it has more to do with directly naming somebody i mean because i mean i could go through a lot of my songs and say yeah they were specifically about somebody. is taylor swift calling anybody out specifically by yeah. name though or is it just kind of important? oh yeah yeah she calls out all of her boyfriends it doesn't matter who is it like it, like is name it, here in the song that she says oh, no name? not like it's well, usually right. like in little quips here or there like putting right. a uh, something that reminded her she, of this person or something right. that she called this person she's throwing shade though it's and not that's, and that's a promotional tactic you know yeah. that's her being yo it is you know it's so and that's coming from somebody that quote unquote writes all their own songs <clears throat> you know now, i used to really like the old taylor swift granted she, even when she, i think she was way more original back then than she is now even then i totally understand that she had that ridiculous like privilege of her parents like dumping a bunch of money onto her to like learn how to write songs with people who write songs for a living and natural like a super unfair advantage or well, record advantage. labels have enough money to buy back enough copies yeah. of their own album to make it hit the billboard and that's just how they do it yeah it's, it's just not the same thing as <laughs> people buying it back and then it's on the billboard yeah. charts and everybody goes what's the top 40 mm-hmm. you know clear channel radio all that stuff you know um live nation it's all it's all big business and what they say mm-hmm. goes you know, yeah. I'm in my room. It's a typical Sunday night. I'm <laughs> listening to the kind of music she doesn't like, but she doesn't get your music like I do. I'm done. No, no keep going. <laughs> uh, Anthony, do you have um, any stories or experiences? you cannot explain with reason or logic um like like um ghosts or spirits or something supernatural supernatural paranormal phenomenon yep that's that's what i mean to say thank you guys yeah um not personally but i'm like fascinated with all of that stuff so i google much of random shit like that all the time 
Um, and a lot of my friends have had some pretty weird things happen. Um, I haven't had anything personally yet. I don't know if that's good or bad, but not yet. Pretty neutral so far. That's a good answer. So do you um, feel like you, uh, you're you open to the belief in it? You just haven't experienced it yet? Oh, I'm just totally. Yeah, I definitely believe that that's a lot kind of what's happening. Things is, you know, mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot that I've seen or experienced like that that, you know. Oh, I've you tried. don't say, huh? You know, you know, with like going into a haunted, uh, supposedly haunted place where people would tell me stuff, and it's I'm almost disappointed. You know, people are like, dude, mm -hmm. I lived in a house where the drawers would fly open, and I'm like, stuff don't happen to me. <laughs> you know, I don't know, yeah. man. You told me about some pretty weird shit. Well, you know, that's but that's maybe it's not for Alice, but yeah, that's that's more just, you know, <clears throat> I'm talking about things i have absolutely no explanation for. okay okay things i couldn't be like well maybe it was a, you know you yeah. know those those common paranormal stories mm -hmm. that make me seem like a skeptic but you know it's just like you're saying you just it's never happened to you mm -hmm. i do think there's certain things um i don't know how you guys feel about this but it's the whole like we ask people about aliens, like UFOs, aliens, extraterrestrial stuff. I feel like there's just, I think, again, I haven't seen anything personally, but I think there are way too many people like around the world, like spread out, not in one, not in the same town or whatever, like all over the world that have described or, you know, talked about certain experiences that are just way too similar. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. There's got to be. <laughs> We're like, absolutely. Be a coincidence. Absolutely on the same page there. There's no fucking way there aren't aliens. They haven't come yeah. in contact with UFOs. There's no fucking way. Mm -hmm. Well, how much of that do you think is like the internet and media's fault? I mean, because people can kind of, you know, hear things or read things and then sort of fall into this idea where they now they are seeing things or, you know, impression. They're impress, you know, people are impressionable. So like I wonder, because you mentioned specifically people across the world, you know, having similar experiences. So I wonder, like, how much of that would be due to, you know, just an influx of information. So now everybody can say, I've seen this. I've seen that. It has to do with the timing of the information. And that's why everybody looks at ancient history, like pyramids, you know, they're like, who built them? We couldn't have just built them. It wasn't, they were built for the, we found out they're machines, they're generating energy. But then you got other things like all the way on the other side of the earth, there's the same kind of thing, but a little bit different. And you're like, okay, well, different type of peoples kind of will evolve the same. But when you look at all the these pyramids around the earth and you back up from the earth, which we didn't know we could do back then or before back then, we didn't know if they knew you see that they line up on the earth with star charts out in the heavens. So you're going, well, how would they know each other if they weren't communicating? That's so far back. We just don't know. Yeah. You know, so it's, if that's one of those things where I can see what you're saying on the level of now, especially looking back at ancient stuff, like the, you know, your, your history channel shows that blend so much together to make it absurd. They're, they're literally trying to make people seem conspiracy theorists yes yes instead of really trying to support these ideas because they jumble all this stuff together that i read about for years and years when i was younger when they didn't have the channel and um but it's just you know now it's like you're saying you can go you can look back and reinterpret things and f f make things fit you know why do we see an airplane in the hieroglyphs if we didn't know what an airplane was you know well, we made the airplane. Well, then, of course, we can see it in there. But then I get what you're saying, you know, so what came first, the chicken or the egg, right? What, there might have just been a hieroglyph that looked vaguely like an airplane. And then we looked at that and designed an airplane off of it. Right. Or when Wright Brothers, you know, whoever designed some airplane or the subconsciously. Spaceship. Yeah. yeah. You also look at utility when it comes to technology. Everything that's used for the same thing and whether it's in space or whether it's on the Earth or whether it's this level of technology or that, if it's a cleaning utensil or a cleaning machine, it still kind of resembled the same thing. So we might just be looking at a device that was used for something that was archaic, 
we just don't know what the hell it was because we hadn't done that in a million years or you know several thousand years and so but we do something else now that is similar so that's why we just say okay that's a, a space helmet that that dude in the hieroglyph has on it's not um this helmet they designed for some weird thing they did under in the in the pond out there that whatever <laughs> Maybe it was a story about dude attempting to do some shit and he died. And that's why we never saw that thing again. You know, <laughs> Phil, you just, Phil, a minute ago when you were talking, you reminded me about um, there was a small town where this teenage girl started developing Tourette symptoms. Um, and it turned out she had Tourette's. It was like it developed later in life. Um, but <laughs> like, it started spreading around her school, like a bunch of her classmates started having Tourette symptoms and it caught on to like her whole town, like a whole bunch of like hundreds of kids were having these symptoms. And it turned out the original girl that had this problem, she actually had Tourette's, but like, I don't know, it somehow got in their heads that this was a contagion and right, suddenly everyone has it and <laughs> but was it just a bunch of kids getting away with screaming obscenities in class maybe that's what i'm saying that sounds like a town i want to live in i know straight up in my high school if that would have happened yeah we'd have been like i got Tourette's. Uh, son of a bitch son of a bitch just be screaming at the teacher the hole. Booty hole. yeah <laughs> just you know <laughs> yeah but you were talking about like misinformation was that a media. cat this is winter. She keeps. I want to see that cut. Yeah. Oh, bombing. This is winter. Aww. That is a beautiful cut. I want to pet that cut. Bring that <laughs> cut here. I want to pet it right now, please. I'll draw it over to you. <laughs> okay. I I I wait. Uh, head scratches. <laughs> okay. So, you believe in aliens? Um, and that, so what about like not not extraterrestrial but interdimensional, like? Do you think maybe what do, you, what do you think about like dimensions and like parallel universe things like that? I think it's fascinating, man. I um every time I see one of those videos that kind of like starts in like some guy's kitchen, right, and it's like slowly zooms out to the front of his house, then like the neighborhood, and then that city, and then the state, and the world, whatever, and just kind of keeps zooming out like past the earth and the solar systems and it kind of just keeps zooming out um it's fascinating man i just think we're, we just don't know enough about where we are <laughs> or like what is here um i totally think that's it's super possible for there to be other not the idea of that there are like parallel universes that is a little um it's harder to wrap my mind around only because it's how do you accept that you're not the only one <laughs> of you you know what i mean right it's like, oh man, shit. But again, we don't know. I mean, it's very possible, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. I guess I was, I was more specifically. Um, I, I didn't phrase my question well. What I, what I really mean is like, uh, like so we have extraterrestrial aliens, meaning um, trespassers from off planet. So like, what about like trespassers from another dimension, like spirits? uh demons ghosts what 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 oh. you may call whatever sorry yeah um yeah that's totally yeah i definitely think that's a thing um when you're telling a story about the the tourette's syndrome that whole thing um uh, i was thinking about the salem witch trials not that it was, it was a completely different thing but just that whole idea of, of uh, <laughs> that i think we know enough to believe that there are some things that are here that are not here all the time, like kind of going in and out, yeah. spirits, demons, whatever you want to call them, angels, whatever you want to call them. Um, so I think we know enough about that. So we're comfortable enough with that idea to believe that one of those spirits could get into a 15 year old girl in the 1500s and like haunt her to the point where we have to like put her on trial. And it's just, the whole thing is just fascinating for me. But yeah, I totally believe that there are, um, we're not alone, if you want to call it, say it like that. Yeah, no, you you seem like um you're really open minded to the to those kind of concepts. Really cool. Um, 
And I think, yeah, like, like you were saying about the Salem witch trials, that's an excellent example. It's, it's the same kind of problem I have with a lot of these modern possession horror movies like Insidious, Sinister, like, I mean, those are fun and I enjoy them for what they are, but at, at, like, it's also really not helpful because like, I've, I've, I've had a lot of experiences with spirits and it's not like it is in the movies. It's not. And I feel like it's almost like propaganda to keep us scared of it, to keep us sheep like, I don't know. It's spirits are like people. There's good people, there's bad people, and there's everything in between. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, yeah, some bad shit could happen, but that doesn't mean you should be prejudiced towards all spirits just because you like one screwed you over, you know? Like, right. You don't yeah. stop making friends just because one friend, you know, said something you didn't like or hurt you somehow. Like, you know, and I think, I think you're actually, I think you're right about that. I think the media uh, portrays things in a lot more of an adverse way than it really is for most people. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say that like things that happen in those movies couldn't happen, but they, you know, like in our experience, that's not how the regular experience with spirits or anything like that goes. And I think that, I think that people talking about the fact that it's not like that is, is really important mm -hmm. because there's a lot you can, there's a lot you can do and a lot you can learn from spirits, you know, because they have a different perspective. That's all that, you know, knowledge really comes about is from a different perspective. You know, they see things differently than we do. So they have a lot of knowledge and things to offer us. And if you are just terrified that if you reach out to anything that you're just going to get, you know, possessed and kill your family or something, or, you know, you know, it just, it limits you. And I think that's like you mentioned, I think that's kind of the point is to keep us powerless in that instance it's it's that and like psychedelics are the same way psychedelics like mushrooms and lsd are schedule a substances that's like a felony for one tab of acid that's ridiculous fucked. man that's yeah. fucked. that's not that's so not okay to, to like i don't <laughs> that's a different rabbit hole but like yeah no it, and it's because it's not because it hurts people it's because it creates new thought patterns it's because it gets you thinking outside of the box that they've put us in mm -hmm. and that's the scariest thing for them thinking oh people thinking independently cut that shit out no make that super illegal like <laughs> well make that illegal but also let's make a billion other distractions to keep them preoccupied so we're not even talking about those things at all that's we're not even we don't even know we should be mad <laughs> or like that's aware of that there's a problem you know that's the bigger thing kind of zooming out like perfect point yeah because it has to do with synapses you know mm -hmm. because they fill our brains with all this and tell us how it's supposed to be our patterns of our thought patterns fire a certain way and physically get changed get shifted and made a certain way and our thought patterns are that like that when you take a substance that causes these things to fire off as randomly and rapidly as they wish it you cause new ones to occur and all these other ones don't function the same way so you know then you're going i don't understand why i'm in this house with four walls because it just doesn't seem right because your instincts are driving against all that conditioning and that conditioning is domestication we're animals and society domesticates us and mm -hmm. just like a domesticated animal a, a canine is a canine because we domesticated them they right we genetically changed them by changing their condition of living and we've done that to ourselves and by taking certain substances you technically can genetically if you will shift your thinking and shift the way your brain pattern works for the good or the worse and they know that even with pharmaceuticals that's why you end up with buddies that seem like they were bad off and then they went for help and they ended up worse years later they're like a veg you know and you're like mm -hmm. you didn't fix them you know yeah that's a whole other the whole pharmaceutical industry it's it's just it's ridiculous man like profiting off of like predatory like it's, it's under the guise of like helping people but it's you're not helping people it's it's crazy do you feel like 
do you ever feel like you don't want to go to work? And that means something's wrong with you. Do you ever you need feel medicine. like do you ever feel like you want to sharpen a stick and go run your food down and wonder why <laughs> you have to do? It's okay. It's okay. You need conformity. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Conformitan. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> It's crazy. Conform. I was watching this thing on the uh, Hulu, and they have like these ads now, or I think it's Amazon Prime, and it, it was some ad for this commercial, this um, some medicine or whatever. And of course, like it's always some family in a park, happier than they've ever been in their entire lives, just skipping and swinging and whatnot. And then like the side effects, oh, sporadic seizures, or you might have a stroke. It's like what? I want to know where that park is because the parks that I see just have the side effects going on there. <laughs> you know <laughs> there's no happy family in the parks i see there's just <laughs> having sporadic there's, effects yeah. <laughs> there's just heart palpitations there's, and just, <laughs> <laughs> there's just erections lasting longer than four hours <laughs> <laughs> that's all as far as i can see <laughs> yeah you know it's <laughs> <laughs> hilarious yeah, it's crazy, man. Everything is commercialized and it's uh, everything is, is consumerism, you know, driven and focused. So, which, you know, obviously we, we live in a society, so I understand that we need to, but I, look, if, if, if you're counting on me to hunt down a rabbit, I'm not going to make it very long. So well, I definitely I, appreciate not, going into Kroger and, you know. I, but, I'm personally <laughs> not, you know, he and I aren't personally in the rabbit hunting seeing that you know <laughs> um but yeah no i'm <laughs> but you know, i get it though it's it, it, it where's that line though you know what i mean my friend um uh he was talking about um i guess i don't know protesting whatever boycotting um netflix because it was like the cuties documentary a few few months ago which i, I never watched it, but i just heard all these right terrible things about it and we're talking about, like where is that line of like okay you're gonna um stop watching netflix because they have the show that is that offends you and it should it should offend everybody with the pulse you know Agreed. um but where's that line are you going to stop you know it's, it's how do you how far do you go with that you know right that's that's an excellent question i mean i'm not going to stop watching netflix even though they did this fucked up shit mm -hmm. like you also are going to think i mean i know a lot of friends of mine that would especially when things got very divided politically all over again um you know, they wouldn't watch a movie or, you know, I would reference old movies and not movies that you would even be paying money to see anymore. And they'd be like, I don't watch no movie with so-and-so in it. And I'm like, why not? Well, because they said blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't understand where you're coming from with this. You're talking about 30 years later, he says some political mumbo jumbo that I don't give a shit. He's an actor. Yeah, I'm talking about a fucking movie that was good. You <laughs> right. Know? right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, same way with bands, you know, I, there's certain lines of, you know, um, well, the great, the, the, one of the best examples of music is, um, look at the popularity of, you hear it at almost every football game, Gary Glitter. Familiar with the Gary Glitter? Got arrested in uh what Vietnam or Thailand or something for uh child prost uh, soliciting child prostitution or something. Real went to prison there. Hmm. He's the dude, Gary Glitter's band is the da -da -da. hey da -da 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 -da. and every oh, okay. and everybody oh. in those stands are singing a convicted child. Oh man, a child uh, solicitor, sexual solicitor. If you, I don't know what the term would be, you know, what that and and yeah, but oh, that's wild, yeah, baffling because everybody's out there going, Yay, and I'm going, Oh, but you guys are the same people that are going, I'm not gonna blah to the blah because they said this, and then all right, that's so I, yeah, that's interesting, man. Yeah. Well, what does it say about the um NFL? commissioner who is in charge of all that i'm sure he knows about that you know well i mean everybody did i mean it's not it's not you can look it up and that's one of the main things that comes up about it. that's only anybody that's the only thing i ever i never even knew the dude's name hmm. you know until 
somebody told me about him and told me that that was his song. I just assumed that was some BS song that I didn't think that was a real song. Honestly, I thought that was just some shit that they came up with the, for a football game. Take in the me 70s. out to the ball yeah, game. Some shit like that, you know. I figured it was or a college band had, you know, some college fight song or part of it, some shit like that. You know, that, I didn't yeah. know it was a rock song. It was a, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. You know, but yeah. I mean. Guess I can't go to football games anymore. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like, what, what do you, you know, it's, it's interesting. It, that just kind of goes to show that we just kind of pick and choose what we have a problem with this particular week. And it changes every week. And it's, it's so annoying. Like, Yeah, that's funny because uh, there's a, a line in the show The Mandalorian where someone says, uh, everybody has lines until shit hits the fan. Lines they won't cross until shit hits the fan. And it's kind of like, you know, it's the same thing. It's we all pick and choose what we're okay with consuming in the moment. And then we kind of just make our standards up as we go along and i mean i can't really decide if that's good or bad <laughs> well the problem is is when people are willing to fold against their standards under pressure you know i can be completely against your standards and not respect you but i'm gonna still have lots of room to lose respect if you fold under your own standards you know that you set out and said this is what i stand on and i'm like well i don't agree with you i think kind of that's kind of shitty but whatever yeah Mm -hmm. And if you fold on that, I might be glad that you folded on it because you're not thinking that way, but I'm not going to be respecting you to have a solid opinion because I'll be like, you could fold again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really hesitant to make lines in the sand because of what you're talking about, Phil. Like, 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 like murder, murder is bad. I'd never kill anybody. Okay. All right. I mean, that's not very, um, op- that's not uh, very imaginative of you. For the record. You can't think of a single situation where you kill somebody. I would somebody. never commit murder. <laughs> also, for the record, I would never commit suicide. Ever. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that. Yeah. If, Say uh, that as often as I can on camera. Yeah. If, if we find <laughs> you one day, we'll know. Yeah. Investigate. Don't stop asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, like, mor- morality is oftentimes really, um, like, uh, uh, situational. Like, like, you can have rules, but then those rules, like, like murder is a great example. In self-defense, murder, I think we're all on the same page. It's, it's not it's really not, bad. It's not considered murder. Murder the term. Is right. Murder. Okay, I get what you're saying. To kill someone. Yeah. We use different terminology yeah. around it. Yeah. But, but you yeah. get in the semantics, you know, it's like, well, I didn't kill him. You know, the fact that he hit the ground at a high rate of speed. You know, and even then, so I didn't actually push him out the window. He was about to stumble and I tripped him. You know, he tripped over my foot and went through there. But you intentionally, well, I didn't kill him. It was that at the bottom. Gravity kills them if you really want. Yeah, you know that that that, <laughs> that, 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 that it's in that, prison gravity. Yeah, it was that uh that sudden stop. <laughs> it wasn't even a fall. I didn't. I mean, I might have caused the fall, but the fall didn't kill him either. It was the concrete actually is what killed him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's interesting. Sometimes I think about where, um, like you talked about morality, like just. It's so interesting, just the way that things develop in, in societies, um, like modern societies, like at some point there were no, if you go to whatever little village or hut town or whatever you want to call it, hundreds, thousands of years ago, right? When there was none of this stuff, at some point there were no rules, there were no speed limits, there were no, there was nothing, right? And slowly, I guess over time, people started to do things that people, I guess, had a problem with and someone was like, hey, that guy's doing that thing. I don't think he should do that. And I guess enough people agreed. <laughs> and so where they said, hey, you can't do this thing. And then that's how things started to kind of form, formulate and um, start digging all these rules and boundaries and, and structures and those lines that we can't cross, you know? It's it's just really interesting. It is. You start to get into uh, what I call tundra law. <laughs> and that's, 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 oh, 
deep ass rabbit hole. That's that would take another two hours. That would take yeah, <laughs> longer than two hours. But yeah, no, uh, it's it's such a catch twenty two because like we're it's a there's obviously problems with our world that we need to change. But that being said, it's the best time to be alive ever in human history. Like we have it so good, and that's why we're all so bitchy and complain about shit is because we have it so well it's like we have the freedom to complain like i was watching an interview at fucking <laughs> skull bus <laughs> oh <I> just, um... <laughs> what was it saying oh oh i was watching this man it's it's fucking hard to get through but i was watching this interview um with it was this young woman that was a refugee from North Korea and she was talking about um yeah she she went through a whole story of how she got out of it but one of the things that really stuck with me about what she said she's like if if you have a concept of freedom and oppression then you aren't oppressed it's like where i come from we don't fight back because we don't understand that we're being oppressed it's not we think we have a great life yeah. and they also keep utterly them, domesticated. They also keep them completely malnourished and starving and always thinking that's about what, food. What, that's, that's what but, we do with livestock. You keep your livestock dumb. You keep them herded. You know, they don't, they need to eat just as much as you want unless they're needing to be fattened up, but you're only fattening them up. You're not feeding them, you know, you're not trying to make them healthy and smart. <laughs> you know, it's not like your dog you take out and run around and throw the Frisbee with. They all herd every day and they all, you know, and hmm. that's the whole idea. So they're never going to freak out and try to bust through the pen, you know. Right. Unless the wolf gets in there or to attack them and then instinct takes over and they have to just do what they got to do, you know. But that's the only instincts they have left. And that's I mean, like, yeah, that's like the metaphor of the dog that every day his owner removes one link from his chain mm -hmm. on his leash until he could, you know, maybe he could have fought back at one point. But by the time he notices, mm -hmm. he's like only got one chain between him and the state. Yep. Like the boiling frog. Mm -hmm. The boiling uh, frog. Speaking of that, <laughs> I actually had. When I was younger, I had two frogs, Barney and Fred, and uh, some neighbor kids boiled my frogs. Uh, they removed the thing that was sitting over their, <clears throat> their bowl and the sun was super hot. It was the summer and they just, I mean, cause they can't feel it. They don't know. So they didn't get out. And they, I came back home from school to a goop, just a watery bowl of green and brown goop that were my frogs. Say the idea is that if you put a frog and you can do it with a lot of things in water that's not hot, it's going to chill. And if you turn on the water, it turn on the heat and it slowly starts to boil, the frog won't notice the temperature change in time before it cooks it, before it kills it. Oh, that's what we talk about, what the government does to the people, right? Yeah, is you tepidly bring things up and people mm -hmm. are like, Next thing you know, you look outside your window and there's a fucking riot. You don't know, you know, and you're like, how did this happen? You know, it was, you know, everything seemed, and it's just little by little, little by little, mm -hmm. you know, same thing with uh, rights. They take, you know, we're like, well, we don't really got to worry about that. Well, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, that was from back in the day. We don't really need that. Well, you know, you start taking a little by little away and that goes back to the chain link. They take a little bit. Next thing you know, you can't move. And you never noticed. Yeah. And now it's too late. You now can't do anything now about it now. Late. You know, and that's how we bureaucratically get ourselves rocked, locked into this government. That's why I thought, why can't we just stand up and overthrow it? Well, because we wrote the damn rules, but we let them write the rules to keep themselves in. It's the way the <laughs> it thing works. It keeps itself in place. One guaranteed vote that will get a yes from every member and every seat in every position is a vote for a raise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm bulk.
Hey, welcome back. And I had to be. For a year when so many people didn't work, the only people completely 100% untouched financially were politicians. They never took a hit from they their, never their wallet, never took a hit. They never lost a day of work or a day of pay. They might have lost mm -hmm. a day of work, but they didn't they work anyway. And that's... I think it's like a... Oh, okay. No, you, you Chris. I just, I was going to quick, I think it's kind of a joke when politicians are like, oh, I'm going to donate my salary. Like, okay, great. <laughs> you still have millions of dollars. <laughs> like, that's our tax money you're just not taking. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, okay. Thank you for not taking more of our money, yeah. assholes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they should be paid more than minimum wage. Ever. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Seriously. If I have a minimum wage, they should not be paid any more than minimum right. wage. Right. If you ever. want the job, it should be for the sake of doing that job mm -hmm. because that's the kind of job it is. You need to live in the most impoverished neighborhood in your area. Yeah. If you yeah. It's, most out, of the people don't even like the city council people. Be the, yeah. Yeah, exactly. They don't even live in the districts they represent, supposedly. It's. You know, but again, like our generation doesn't pay attention to that enough. Government so. housing should be for government employees first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you no. know, yeah, mm. we, we've got a whole generation of people, uh, numb, like you're saying, Anthony, just not paying attention. And that's um, a big part of why we're doing this right here is to talk about not only fun stuff, but also the the stuff that we need to talk about as people because the serious conversations people aren't having them enough it's not there's actually a, a real um like a real disconnect yeah there's such a lack of real communication with people it's easier to flip it off yeah mm -hmm. nobody wants to think and nobody wants to. well go. yeah we're not challenged like if you look at social media like i have no problem with social media some people just completely bash it it's kind of what you make of it, you know, I have no problems with it. But the thing about it is you completely control what information you're, well, partly. When you see the information, um, once you see it, once you have it, you control what you want to do with it. You don't have to keep seeing, you know, Johnny's posts or Susie's posts if you don't want to. And that kind of creates this, um, what's the, um, oh, what's the, terminology it's echo um, chamber 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 yes. echo chamber. chamber it's this thing where it's something about your belief system anyway like you you make your own um that's like right there you um you only see what you want to believe so you kind of you're you're only seeing what you already yeah um, confirmation bias that's what it is oh, confirmation, yeah. bias. Yeah. confirmation yeah. bias so you're in this little bubble of things that you already believe people that you already like things that you already you know agree with or whatever so there's no challenge you know so I think when we have these conversations, we're just not used to seeing another side of it because we don't have to if we don't want to. So we don't know how to handle that, you know? So people get all worked up about stuff. And I'm like, no, you know, why? <laughs> just listen to the other person and see what they have to say and then go from there, you know? You hit the nail on the head, man. If you don't like Johnny's posts, you don't have to cancel Johnny so no one can see Johnny's shit. You just mm -hmm. have to stop following Johnny. Mm -hmm. And that's that's like like to take it any further than that is like who the fuck are you it, it, i think it's 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 even on a level of such a it's it's almost juvenile it's you mm -hmm. know it's so why would somebody i tell people all the time about you know they talk about the platform of, of, of you know being against the platform of free speech we should be giving people the platform let's say you take an example imagine a man on a soapbox spewing the most intolerable ideology you can imagine and if you stood there all day going off and no one paid him any attention literally just ignored him he probably would not ever come back he might in fact quit spewing it and go think about when the hell nobody heard me yep if people stop and I didn't go, work in skyrim <laughs> if, if people show up and start going hey i agree with you well then that might be an issue but if somebody stops and says you're wrong you need to stop and begins an argument yep then you fuel the fire because now 
it's not about that opinion anymore necessarily it's about two egos and the ego on the ground could be he could be right in his view he could have the moral gr high ground yelling at this dude that's spewing a bunch of nonsense but the man on the ground also has people that don't agree with him and if somebody sees that immediately like you're saying the confirmation bias well that dude over there has always been an ass to me and he's kind of a dipshit why is he yelling at this dude on the podium i'm not even worried about what the dude on the podium saying now i just know that this dude's been an asshole to me before so i'm automatically not on his side this is only a two-way thing so there's only one other side to be on hmm. hey why are you yelling at him well he believes blah 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 well i don't believe that either but you should leave him alone because you're an asshole <laughs> yada, 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 i've yada, already yada. decided fuck you Bam. <laughs> you know meanwhile if everybody just kept walking by this dipshit that was spewing ignorance he would eventually go home yeah and well it's also like <sighs> except in skyrim because in skyrim you know also how do we know wh which ideas are bad unless you've heard them like you you <laughs> like we need to know which ideas are good and which ones are bad which means we need to hear the bad ideas mm -hmm. and, and I'm full them. of bad ideas <laughs> like let's hear him scuff <laughs> okay you should never stick your hand into a tiger's mouth you okay. should also never bathe in urine sure good it's ideas. sterile but you should never do it but those are good ideas <laughs> to not do i mean you're saying it's not you should not that's a good idea uh, I mean, it's a bad idea to do it, but yeah. But those are, that's an idea you had before, though. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you, you're, yeah. you're 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 yeah. telling yourself that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't pet porcupines. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like you know, one of my favorite. That was a bad idea. It's one of my favorite tips to give: is you never pet a flaming dog. A new nephism. I haven't yeah, heard that, that one. Never before. pet a burning dog. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean in, uh, you should at least ask the owner if you could pet it first. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> you know, but if it's burning on fire, you probably shouldn't pet it. What if I have oven mitts? What if he's a good boy? <laughs> no, you can't account for these things. <laughs> How good of a boy is he going to be if he's on fire? It means he got well, it something he shouldn't have been in. It could, it could well, he fault. was dropping that fire sheet. <laughs> on that note um it's been real gentlemen i think um start wrapping things up here i gotta go here in a minute but um before we do um i there is one more thing i want to ask you anthony yeah um what are and i i don't want to make this um exclusively to music across all mediums what were a lot of your big inspirations as an artist coming up? Like, I guess what what inspires you? That's a great question, man. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess two parts. So the first part, just in the literal music sense, um, I grew up listening again, just in the whole religious thing. Grew up with a ton of like gospel music, playing all the time, which I'm not mad at because that is really just from a musical standpoint some really cool stuff that's like modulation jazz is pretty much the same like r&b jazz and gospel musically are the same thing it's the exact same thing yeah. it's just what what <clears throat> the message on top is very different okay. but musically it's pretty much the same thing so i love those um kind of groovy jazzy chords like augmented diminished stuff all the stuff that's not like just super cookie cutter generic stuff like pop music is so we call um, um what we used to call bedwetting chords Better be, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 music, the music school graduates would argue with us about it. You can't play that because it's you, the way you were writing this is in this key. Well, I just do whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I, I love that part of that, that you have freedom to explore. There, there's no rules. I mean, there, there's rules. You have to know from like a theoretical sense, but yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to know them to be able to break them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So musically, yeah. Um, a lot of like gospel RB stuff and, um, like all through growing up through probably like college and then I started to get into like um 
I wouldn't call it metal, but like hard rock, like harder than like the fray, you know, um, like Shine Down, stuff like that, which I, I love the fray, but it's just like, you know. so um, that was like in college. And then, yeah, from college, I just kind of got heavier and heavier. Um, so now I'm into this whole like metal thing right now. But um, and then the other part of what inspires me, not just from a musical standpoint, um, kind of like what we're doing, man, just talking to people. I like meeting people. I like um, seeing what how people get to where they are in their belief systems and the way that they act, how they, um, just how they are, you know, I like, I just like people. I like people, but I also don't like people a lot. So it's, it's kind of one of those things, like I'm super good just not talking to anybody for like a month and doing the self-checkout at Kroger and like Amazon priming stuff to my house when I have to go outside. But, and then so what's going on down there? And uh, I think he's in agreement with you, huh? Okay. <laughs> Uh, and there's a polar opposite of that where I do like meeting new people and I like hearing their stories and, um, you know, just, just what, how they think about this weird place that we find ourselves in. So yeah. you, you like individuals, but not necessarily people. Yes. Yes. I, I this man a raise. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually, it's funny. I was telling Scuffle Mus not too long ago. Like I've actually noticed I have less patience since I started this podcast. <laughs> And it's because you get, I, I've, I noticed I've surrounded myself with people that like will challenge me and like work on their own ideas and like, no, 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 you're not right. Think about it this way. But then it's like, you meet these people that don't uh, have that at all. <laughs> and it's like, yes, man, they don't want to challenge you. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, like the people I bring, the people in my tribe, the people I surround myself with are the people that will tell me when I'm on a bad path, people that will tell me when I'm wrong. And if that's, that's what a friend is, you know, um, we have to do that for each other. Uh, <laughs> Anthony, uh, thanks again for doing this, man. Um, I'm going to see you Saturday at Fat Cat Slims. Uh, Alex, mm -hmm. you got to be there too. Don't flake out yes. on us. Um, we want you you alice, alice. You better be there because <laughs> i might not be able to make it so you should yeah um beyond here saturday july 17th mm -hmm. Cat slims don't be late do you know what time anthony you know when doors are <laughs> that's uh, eight o'clock i think year of october they're playing at um we're eight to nine they're nine to ten i want to say okay 10 10 to 15 they may play a little bit longer but, uh, so show up at seven, Alice, and start buying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, guys, uh, we'll see you next time. See you, Alice. Bye, Alice. See you, guys. She wears short skirts. I wear t-shirts. She cheer cotton and I'm on the bleachers. Dreaming all the day when she wake up and find that what I'm looking for has been here the whole time. If you could see the time, the one who understands you been here all along. So why can't you see? You belong to me. Been here on the sidelines waiting for you and I don't know the rest of the world. So goodbye, Alice. Goodbye, Alice.